I have a question for you. And the question is, how many of you are on a regular basis either doing the meditation, prayer, or affirmation? Raise your hand if you're doing it every day. Who would like to share? Because there's different levels. When you are starting, for example, you're connecting to Creator and you have a lot of intrusive thoughts. You're thinking about, I need to cook, clean, take kids to school, or need to do laundry, and etc. But then, over time, it becomes easier and easier and easier, and then you have less of those intrusive thoughts. But then at some point, you also get to the point of a plateau where you have a very hard time to connecting to Creator. So I would like to hear from you in which stage are you in. A lot of intrusive thoughts or a lot of less of them and you're connecting with ease or you're in a plateau where it's very hard to connect to him and you're kind of in a space of nothingness. So who would like to share? I definitely feel like I'm in a plateau. Okay, got it. Thank you. Who else and would I, like to share? I think I even stopped meditating at night because I was trying to incorporate both and I felt like it was too much for me so I'm consistent with the morning but not at night clear thank you Gabriella for sharing I definitely have recognized that in my practice as well and for me personally I'm like on the up yes. so I'm actually consistency is something that I could definitely improve on but I'm on the it's easier to tap in for me clear excellent thank you now as i'm going to start sharing i would like for you to be authentic with yourself one thing could be that you're on a plateau but second thing could be that your intention to connect to the creator is not there and these are two different things okay and then i will tell you if you're in a plateau how to overcome the plateau but if the intention is not there we have to put the intention. So now I would like for us to start masterclass. How first topic will be how to pray properly. First, we have to recognize that as a human beings, we don't know how to connect to a higher power. The moment we slow down, we start thinking how you need to cook, clean, um, take care of the house, pay the bills, uh, send emails, go to work, make a coffee, and etc. Our mind is busy and is not tuned to a holy person because we don't understand the value of a holy person. What a holy person, I mean, for some of you, it's going to be Allah, to some it's going to be Jesus, to some it's going to be Buddha or Krishna. We see the value in cleaning, cooking, paying bills and raising kids. That's what we have in our head. To get rid of this illusion that prayer or meditation is not very important, you must listen to a voice who knows that it is important. And look at the image of a holy person who knows that it is important. And I will explain that a little bit later, what I mean by that. And if you have to repeat a mantra, prayer, or meditation that is closer to your heart, for example, some of you know that you believe in Allah. That means it has to be Allah. Some of you know that it is Jesus. Then it is Jesus. Some of you know it's Baba Nam Kevalam, Parama Purusha. For some of you know, it's just universe. Nobody can tell you what heart is in your soul. Only you know that. You don't need to use someone else shares or breakthroughs in your spiritual path. You don't need to make it up because again, each one of you know who do you need to pray or meditate to. And God will respond, or Creator will respond to that. But if you're trying to figure out, is it universe or Allah or Jesus, you're not really connecting to your soul because the answers are in your soul. And Creator is really extraordinary because He can solve any problem, any problems that you have 
with everyone or one person or two person and it will benefit everyone. And you would have never thought of that kind of a solution by yourself. And you must know that when a person prays, peace, love and happiness comes to your heart. That's why prayer is necessary, absolutely necessary in your life. You must understand that if you don't tune to God, and if you will not serve people and your loved ones and the society, and you're just repeating the mantra, Baba Nam Kevalam, or Jesus uh, great, or Allah is great, you are just wasting time. And it's just a pointless mantra or affirmation. Because our Creator wants more than anything from us is to connect to Him and serve others. He is not selfish. And the more you serve others, the more He wants to take care of you. Any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. I think it's interesting, the serve others part, because what I find for myself is that, that I want to choose who I serve, but God has already chosen who I need to serve. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm That's not, beautiful. I don't think I'm doing that. <laughs> yes, yes. I also have a girlfriend, and she said the same thing. God wants me to serve ah, girls in, who gone through sex trafficking. She said, but I have no guts for it. I said, you don't have guts for it because you are not doing a prayer or meditation. And if you're using yourself, it's going to be impossible to be with the girls who've gone through sex trafficking. But if you're going to do the practices, you will have everything to help all the girls. And once she starts doing that, things start to shift. And now she's helping over 200 girls in Atlanta and Florida area. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. we cannot choose. You're absolutely right. To me, it was the hardest thing to recognize that I'm afraid of public speaking, but here I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> publicly speaking, right? Because Creator chooses what I gotta do, not me. <laughs> like, I'm just a therapist. I've been a therapist for 21 years. How can I share spirituality? But like, no, gotta wake up and <laughs> share knowledge. We cannot choose, ladies. Any, any other questions? The most important part in the prayer is connection to pu purity and truth. How do we connect to Him? Let me explain. You connect to Him the same way you experience love. For example, um, you fell in love with a boy or with a man. You will find time to go date him, to answer his call, or to go on a date, and you're going to get dressed up, right? The same way you reach Creator and your God. Only through strong desire, only this way. The same way you cry when you break up, the same way you cry when your child gets sick or you get worried, the same way you connect to Him. Not with your mind, but with your heart. Your mind has no access to Him, only your heart. And we should be straight with ourselves and each other. You can't resolve anything in life without His help. And when you reach out with this desire, help me, help me. And this is, by the way, the truth. We live fully under the trap of our karma. And if a person doesn't pray, it is very easy to see a person's destiny. Just look at the person's Vedic horoscope. And you'll see a lot of drama, breakup, divorce, another boyfriend, another husband, and that's how life goes. But if you turn to Him and you get in tune to Him, that you can live life without karma because you're committing to choose to serve Him. And in service of Him, you are then living a life being happy, being fulfilled experiencing love, and most importantly, experiencing a person that He sends to you. Not you choosing a boyfriend or a husband, but He chooses a person to you because you dedicated your life to Him. And when you pray, your life becomes 
thousand percent better than it could be otherwise. Some things will still stay in your life, but the meaning of it changes 100%. Again, you have to get a happy life only through connection to Him. Otherwise, everything, it becomes like a game, the game that you see in the horoscope. Break up dating, break up dating, single life, unhappy, lonely, sad, and there's no vibrance and happiness that we're seeking. Because honestly, we're seeking the happiness through other people. We're thinking that boyfriend or a child will, a son or daughter will make me happy. But it never works this way. We truly want happiness, but it only comes from Him, from above. Any questions so far? When earlier, I can't remember who said it, but like it's easier to tap in and meditate when you're struggling and when you're going well. It's that I think is what it is, is that when I'm lost and I'm like, guide me, yes. I'm like really quick to turn to him, but when yes. things are going and I'm making my own decisions, which is actually making the problems that I'm going to say, help me. Yes. I'm like, that, that. <laughs> And now when I address that since it's in the space. So 10 years ago when I started, I was doing uh, I wish everyone happiness mantra that we're going to do a little bit later. And the way we're going to do it, it's going to help you to really powerfully connect to the Creator. So I was doing it for 8 to 10 months, something like that. And it was working well. And then 10 months later, around 10 months, I got to the plateau. And then there was nothing. A week, a two, a three, and there's nothing. And if you still have this strong desire to connect to the Creator, the signal is the mantra stop working because Creator wants you to grow more. And so I start reading spiritual books. And then it naturally became that I started to pray. And so for two years, I was experiencing really high because I'm studying books, I'm praying, and it was powerful. But guess what happened after two years? Yes, another plateau, nothingness. A week, two, and three, and then my gut feeling told me that I need something even more. And that's when I started to learn about meditation. I was learning meditation, I started meditating, it took quite some time because it was a different spiritual technique, and then I started experiencing this high, right? And then, guess what happened? Aha, uh -huh. and that's what I'm going to share. So three and a half weeks ago, no, actually four weeks ago, I reached the plateau. And then I thought, okay, what do I do now? I start emailing my teachers, they couldn't answer. And then I'm finding a friend of mine, another teacher, who said, when you get to this plateau, that means you got to break free from Egg Gregor. And now I will share this, even though some of you might not need it in your spiritual journey, but I still would like to share, okay? So imagine that this is the mountain, okay? This is the mountain. And when we start our spiritual journey, sometimes we need either religion or technique to start climbing up. So basically, you jump on the taxi. This is a taxi, not very pretty one. <laughs> But you're jumping on the taxi, and the taxi is starting to take you to this level. And you're growing spiritually. But at some point here, you are getting stuck on the plateau. And when you get stuck on the plateau, it's time to do what? You have to jump to the next level. Exactly. And so I was jumping from one taxi or Uber to another, from one to another, to continue to grow. But if you get through prayer and meditation and mantra and you're still in the plateau, what do you do then? Because that's what was my dilemma four weeks ago. 
What can I do if I'm stuck? May, uh, maybe come up with your phone. Okay, and, your phone. and if you come out, what's next? I will serve better more, so I'll try to go up. Well, that what was my dilemma. I mean, I reach a Vedic mantra here, a yoga mantra here. My heart is not calling to do Muslim faith or Christian faith. Everything that my heart desired, I reach. So what's then? I'm in a plateau. Surrendering to God and being like, God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And so that's where I went to a spiritual retreat three weeks ago in Turkey. And by the way, two days later, I was co-leading with a spiritual guru, but he got me out of recognizing that religion can get you to a certain level. You need it. But then afterwards, it's not going to get you to the top of the mountain. And then the question, why not? Um, be kind of because it, it's almost like baby steps for you to take your own. So it's sporting for yourself. Yes, and how will that look like? Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> how can you jump out of this bus and recognize that the faith cannot longer take you to the top of the mountain? How? What can you do? That's where I was. What's next, right? Yeah, and I'll share. Fully surrendering, and in full surrender, do you know what you see? That God is truly everywhere. And on that spiritual first day retreat, I couldn't stop crying because all the mantras, Vedic mantras and yoga mantras were saying Baba Nam Kevalam, right? In meditation, we feel God is everywhere. But once you come out of Gre Gregor, you start to feel God is everywhere, every moment of your life. Every second of your life. Not during the prayer, not during the meditation. But every conversation and every second, and every moment, God is with you in each one, in every conversation. And then you are no longer in the box of this meditation or this prayer. You just feel Him all the time. And this is the most experience, a most profound experience that you feel really joy and love all the time. Understanding, not understanding, feeling, feeling His love, feeling His presence. Yeah, what's present with you? Yes, but what's present with you? Well, it had to be so amazing. It is. And you see, in the religious um, institution, we are used to doing this properly and that properly. In Christian Orthodox, my girlfriend saying, I have to go to church to put the candle. Other girls in Catholic church, they got to do this properly. In uh, my cousin who does prayer, she's Muslim five times a day, she does it properly. But this is still part of head, connecting a little bit to the heart. Do you get it? But this, again, it gets you to a certain level. There's a certain level of the mountain. You need it. But it's not going to get you to the peak. And that's what Creator wants for us, to reach the peak. Because at this point, I can wake up and not do Baba Nam Kevalam. I don't have to do the prayer. I can just say, I wish love everyone, or I am grateful to you, or I can say anything and I'm still connected to Him. There's no need for that rituals and that discipline because you're already out of that egregor. 
But I will explain even more because I had a debate with a spiritual teacher on that retreat. I said, okay, let's say hypothetically, a person doesn't choose to jump on the taxi or Uber to get to this level, this and that level, or just one level. How can they reach the peak? Are you curious? 